Good morning, everyone. I am Harsh Kardan Sarda, the business head at Iris Closing Limited. We appreciate all of your participation and your interest in our esteemed company. Let me start by highlighting the key developments in the quarter that has gone by. Uh, first, let me. We are extremely proud to share that we have opened our first exclusive brand outlet, known as EBO, in Calcutta towards the end of last quarter. After that, we followed that up with another EBO in Kolkata again last month, and these EBOs have been set up basically to showcase our complete range of kids wear and enhance our brand recall among the consumers. The performance of these stores has been promising since the first day, and the ongoing festive season in Calcutta has further boosted the demand. We intend to keep leveraging this opportunity and the plan, and we plan to come up with at least three more stores in and around Calcutta in the next few quarters. Our Pan India distributor network continued to expand as we added seven new distributors. We strengthened our presence in states like Maharashtra and West Bengal, and made good inroads in the northeastern states of Nagaland. On the product side, we have been seeing immense traction in infant wear, and expect this to contribute materially going forward. We estimate a revenue contribution of around 15 to 20 percent from this vertical by FY24. We are seeing a similar traction starting to pan out in the Disney designed apparels as well, along with a stronger, robust growth in the sportswear vertical too. Now, coming to our capital expenditures for this year, we have guided a capex of three crores for FY24, out of which we have already employed around 1.4 crores in the first half. This capex has primarily been towards machinery to expand capacity and the furniture for our two stores that we have opened as well. Now, for the benefit of the larger audience, I would like to give a short brief about our company, what we do, and what is our background. Incorporated in 2004, Iris Clothing Limited is a rapidly expanding company specializing in children's apparel with end-to-end in-house capabilities. Given its strong focus on designing, manufacturing, branding, and selling garments, our products are marketed under the renowned brand Doremi, which was successfully launched in 2005. When we had just started off, Doremi found its market through a distributor-retailer network headquartered in Mumbai. However, since then, we have gained substantial popularity through positive word of word of mouth publicity. Our brand has also garnered widespread recognition in the retail chain due to its outstanding quality and the stylish selection. Along with that, our consistent ability to introduce new products featuring diverse designs, we cater to a broad range of clothing needs for infants, toddlers, junior boys, and girls, ensuring that their indoor and outdoor requirements are met. Now, coming to the distribution side. Our brand has had good presence in 25 plus states across India, with Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Gujarat, and NCR being our key markets. Our network of 150 plus distributors has been expanding consistently quarter on quarter, while most of our sales happen through this distribution network. That is our primary distribution model. We also have an online presence through our own direct to consumer platform, Doremi. In. And we also sell through e-commerce channels like First Cry. Coming to the manufacturing side of things, we currently operate out of four key manufacturing sites based in Havra in West Bengal. The entire process of garment manufacturing is completed in-house, right from design development, cutting, printing, stitching, finishing, quality checks, and packaging. So basically, we are an end-to-end -end, uh, in-house manufacturing facility. A manufacturing infrastructure that is strongly backward integrated enables us to have the cost efficient coupled with effective quality control. As of now, our installed capacity stands at around 33,000 pieces per day, out of which we are uh, currently utilizing around 25,000 pieces per day in the past quarter. I will now hand over the call to our Chief Financial Officer, Neera Jagarwal. Who will walk us through the Q2 FY24 financial numbers? Thank you, and over to you, Nitesh.
and viewers. In Q2 F524, our total revenue stood at 32.2 crores, up by 1.2 percent year-on-year basis. This growth was primarily driven by volume. However, the impact on the price limited our revenue growth. During the quarter, we passed on the benefit of low raw material prices to our customers which ended up impacting the price. EBITDA was at 7.6 crores in Q2 FY24, up by 11.8% year-on-year basis. EBITDA margin was 23.5% against 21.3% in the same quarter last year and 26.3% in Q1 of FY24. The Q1Q drop in margin was due to increase in employee expense on account of additional hiring at the back end to support a new store and to ramp up production. Apart from this, profit after tax stood at 3.7 crores in Q2 FI24, while tax margin was 11.4% versus 11% in Q2 FI23 and 12.7% in Q1 FY24. Here again, the quarter and quarter drop was due to increase in finance cost. We have begun building inventory for summer collection wear a month prior than usual, as we foresee robust demand in Q4 FY24. In line with this, we expect finance cost to reduce by FY25 onwards. With this, we can now open the floor for questions. Thanks. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and 1 on the touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. You may press star and 1 to ask questions. We'll take the first question. We'll take the first question from the line of Harmit Desai from Pendulum Investments. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. So, uh, firstly on the guidance, I just wanted to check uh, what is the kind of revenue contribution that you are expected from the stores in FI24 and 25? For FI24, 25, uh, we are looking at a revenue contribution of around uh, uh, 7 to 8 percent in the coming year mm -hmm. from the stores. Okay. Yes. Uh, and uh, if you can share, you know, further update on uh, D2C business, so the website part. Uh, yes. It was launched a few quarters ago. So, yes. are we getting, uh, you know, uh, we wanted, I wanted to understand uh, on revenue and margin fund on, the, on this business. So, the D2C platform uh, revenue wise is not significantly contributing as of now, but uh, the presence is expanding because uh, right now, once we start opening stores, the only channel advantage that we'll get from our distribution from the store. And our presence on the e-commerce platform, on the uh, Dormi.in platform, that will help to revenue. But as of now, it is not significantly contributing to the revenue margins. Okay. And so just one doubt which I had on this D2C part is that uh, would parents be willing to uh, order the uh, clothes online because, you know, the size is always a problem for kids. I understand that, but uh, since we are a brand which has been in the market for quite a while now and we have been maintaining standard sizes across, hmm. so with brand confidence growing, uh, sizing is pretty much standard. So I'm pretty sure we are going forward, this will become a good revenue channel for us and for the market as well. So we are very positive on the D2C side. Okay. And... Uh... So recently we had seen one press release which was saying on upcoming uh, EVOs in and around Kolkata. So any plans to open the stores in other states? 
So as of this year, we want to open, uh, we are taking a cluster based approach where we want to open five to seven stores in and around Calcutta and eventually open up other states as well uh, in the coming years. Okay. So definitely we have plans to open uh, stores in uh, different states, but not this year. We plan this in the coming years in 24, 25. Uh, on the technical front or the manufacturing front, I wanted to understand that uh, kit manufacturing being labor intensive business. Yes. In many parts of our countries, uh, many companies are facing, you know, uh, labor issues. So, where you are sitting right now, uh, yes. geographically, how do you feel you are uh, placed and uh, regarding the uh, employee uh, availability or labor availability? Uh, how is the scenario, sir? So, geographically, the place where our units are located, uh, thankfully, we have not faced uh, any labor troubles and the abundance of labor around our factory. So, we don't find it very difficult to uh, get labor, even if there is some kind of friction. Since we have um, for a lot of these uh, women, it helps us uh, boost our, uh, you know, Time of uh, labor across the year. So we have not faced a lot of trouble in Europe. And we don't see that happening in the coming time. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, going forward, sir, I just wanted to check one more on the export uh, states which you are, uh, export countries which you are currently exporting. And right. also the order book status uh, and a YOY order book status. Like, has it been increasing or the increasing trend? So this year, by the end of this year, uh, we will definitely see some kind of uh, growth in our exports because we have uh, we are there are a couple countries uh, stores which are in the pipeline in terms of the order book, mm -hmm. and we definitely see a five to seven percent revenue contribution from exports from last year's three to five percent. Mm -hmm. And what would be the countries which we are targeting specifically for exports? So countries we are doing Mozambique, we are doing Saudi Arabia, we are doing Dubai, hmm. UAE across. Uh -huh. We did a small uh, shipment to Portugal as well, uh -huh. Zambia too. So primarily the Middle Eastern and African countries hmm. Hmm. and uh, definitely Nepal which is uh, a good market for us. Right. So idea is still to be dominant in the domestic uh, as a domestic. Yes, yes, yes. That That is the primary focus. We see robust demand in the domestic segment going forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, so lastly, you know, uh, in, uh, as an investor, I would like to understand what are the plans for the company for coming, say, three to five years? So uh, is there any capex which you are planning or, you know, how the company will pan out from today? What is your thought process? I just wanted to check. So uh, going forward, if you if you have followed our company for the past year, mm -hmm. what we have done is we have built a lot of bases uh, for the company to grow on. So multiple pillars. We launched sportswear, so we are expanding our product category. We are expanding distribution by launching our own store. And so there are multiple pillars that we have created in the last say four or five. Going forward. We want to build on those pillars and uh, we look at a much stronger growth rate in the next three to four years. So in the next three to four years, we're targeting a revenue of say 300 crores, 250 to 300 crores. For which we will need a capex to expand our production, but uh, we are still working on what kind of capex will be need uh, and uh, exact timing of that capex. Understood. But this is the overall broad plan. So, if I have further questions, I'll join the queue. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, to ask questions, you may please press star and one. We'll take the next question from the line of Chintan Shah from Systematics. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, good morning, sir. Uh, sir I wanted to ask, uh, can you give me the split between the revenue from online channel and offline? So online, if we consider first cry and our own platform in total, it contributes around 10, uh, seven percent of our revenue. Seven percent. Okay. Yes. So maximum is coming from the offline channel. 
and uh, yes, yes. the majority is to the infant. Yeah. So this infant category, the thing is that the the size of the kid you know, increases, you know, rapidly after a week on week. So are, are you getting any repeat orders? Would you have any data on that? Uh, yes. So we we are not really collecting regular data, but from whatever we hear from our distributors, the good thing is once we have captured the infant uh, at a very young age. They eventually become our repeat customers till they turn 16, 17, right? Because uh, our entire, uh, a lot of our marketing is because of our product, our product quality. So if we capture them at a very young age, they usually tend to be our customer at least till they turn 16 or 17. So that is a huge advantage that we have by creating the infant wear category as well. And uh, is there any effect of like, uh, like, see, you are doing 23% uh, beta margin this quarter, and historically you have been in the range of 18 to 20%, right? So, yes. in this quarter also, the Diwali effect is in the next quarter. So, is there any possibility that next quarter you will be doing uh, better sales, like in number terms, if you can reach any data? So, what we have seen is since uh, Jan to March quarter, the Q4 is where we will see the new summer season coming up which will have a robust uh, growth in terms of our margins and our revenue, both. So we are seeing a big uh, ro big advantage in the Q4 coming up in terms of revenue. Okay, so Q4 is the strongest quarter. Yes, we have started, we have already started production, so we are building up inventory so that we can manage the demand at the Q4 level. Okay, yeah, that's it for mine. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and 1. We'll take the next question from the line of Samyak Sapare from Wealth Tree Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, having some uh, questions. Uh, so, this is with regards to our EBOs. Can you state what was the revenue that we uh, garnered from this segment? So from the EBOs we launched last month, right? So September end was our first store and October first week was our second store. Uh, both those stores in total we did around 12 lakhs for our 500 square feet store, which is in line with expectations. And we see this growing for growing going ahead as well. Okay, okay, and. Uh... Like and, and if you see this, uh, you know, infant uh, uh, category, yes. uh, like you know, growing. So, um, how much can we? Uh, how much revenue that we, uh, you know, got from this vertical uh, during this H1 and Q2 FY24? So H1 Q2, uh, as in total, I think we have done around 15 percent from the vertical already. And we look forward by the end of the year, we we'll look at look at that uh, around 20 percent. Okay, and see a good scope of uh, improvement from here. Yes, yes, yes. We are seeing strong demand in this segment. Okay, uh, and when uh, and again continuing the same segment, uh, what would be the typical price range for the uh, you know uh, this this uh, segment line? And how would be our, our margins? Are they a normal uh, like from, from our business, or this this would be a bit higher margin accretive one? So the margin for this is usually a little higher, and uh, the price range ranges from around uh, say one sixty rupees to it uh, six forty rupees. Okay, uh, and if we can just uh, give a range of margins, that would be helpful. Any uh, any ballpark range? Ballpark in terms of EBITDA numbers or uh, EBITDA, EBITDA uh, margins for infant wear, infant wear. EBITDA margins for infant wear comes somewhere around twenty four percent, twenty four to twenty five percent. Okay, okay, and uh, and my last question, like. Uh, would our would would our margin be similar for all the products? And if we can categorize, what would be our typical high margin products and low margin products? So margins are usually uh, it varies from product to product, but our highest margin products are usually uh, 
frocks, so the infant frocks that we do for kids from zero to five years, that is usually a higher profit margin. And sets that we do, infant sets, pajama sets for kids, that is usually a higher profit margin. Okay, okay. Uh, so thanks for the detailed, uh, uh, you know, answers and your patience. And uh, you know, I'll be I'll be joining the queue if, if I have any other for the clarification. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Karan Sanwal from Niveshai. Please go ahead. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, yes sir. Sorry. Your voice is little muffled, Mrs. Sanwal. I would request you to use your handset, please. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my, my question uh, question is like, uh, what is the cost of uh, setting up the EBO that we are planning? Like uh, we have set up two, and then we are will be setting up total five in this year. So we told, what will be the total cost of this EBO? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat? What will be the total cost of the EBO? Yeah, cost of setting up the EBO. Like there would be an uh, KPEG that would be involved and then inventory. So on uh, average, every store uh, for an average size of the store that we are looking at, we look at somewhere around 20 to 25 lakhs per store. So if we open up five stores, it comes to around 1.25 stores. Okay, and how much inventory uh, do we, um, uh, you know, do so we usually we keep 10 to 50 lakhs of inventory per store. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, we have heard in our PPT that our raw material prices uh, corrected, so we have passed on the cost. So, would we be taking any other further price cut in our... Uh, no, I think uh, right now we are not taking any price cuts. Instead, we are improving our uh, average sales price. So, we are improving our prices. Okay. Uh, also, yes. uh, can you share the volume and uh, price growth data for the quarter? Separately, volume uh, and size growth. Um, in terms of volume, as we said, we are doing somewhere around twenty-five thousand pieces per day uh, in terms of production as of now, which is what the volume has been. Uh, we, um, we do not have the exact volume numbers on sales as of now. No, I'm just uh, talking about the growth of uh, this uh, volume uh, quarter on uh, for year on year for the quarter. Uh, that's around 10% in terms of volume. Okay. And uh, also, uh, if if you would be comfortable sharing the average selling price across uh, categories, uh, if you could, for the company, basically, on the consolidated basis, and how it has moved uh, over a period of, let's say, one to two years. So, if you see the average selling price of our company has moved from uh, 300, 350 to 400, and going forward, we look at we look to push it to around 500 by the end of the year. Okay. So uh, this winter wear and uh, winter wear that we uh, have in this uh, the, the third quarter, that would be a high uh, uh, high price uh, item. Yes, right? winter wear is usually a higher price. Does it uh, contribute to the margins? Uh, does it have a higher margin as well, or uh, does the price are higher? Uh, we definitely have better margins, but uh, not this year because we have some carry forward inventory from last year, which we are selling at a discount, so it will not have better margins. But uh, going forward, uh, we see winter wear in the next year to be a much better margin contributor. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, so I, I missed the, uh, the guidance that you have given, so if you could uh, share it again uh, along with the EBITDA margin that we are expecting uh, two, three years down the line. So we see EBITDA margins improving from 21 to, say, it will stay in the 21 to 23 percent going forward. That uh, is the stable uh, margin number that we are looking Revenue, sorry. I'm sorry? Uh, in the revenue front, what uh, what the what uh, what revenue are we targeting in three years down the line? Three years down the line, we are looking at two fifty to three hundred crores in terms of revenue. Okay. And also one last question: uh, As we see the PPT, the revenue the, you have given the revenue contribution from top five cities. So yes. the, just wanted the clarification that uh, this cities keep on changing. So do we uh, see any absolute uh, absolute uh, you know uh, reduction? 
from any of the cities that we uh, mentioned i'm sorry i didn't get your question can you so the question that? is uh, we, we you uh, you give the uh, top 5 contributors city wise uh, for dore me right uh, and uh, the the name of the city keeps on uh, changing quarter and quarter and that's it's fair enough but i just wanted to a uh, clarification that uh, on uh, you know full year basis uh, have we seen any uh, reduction in uh, you know contribution from any cities or uh, since the, uh, really. the percentage uh, not really not really we do not usually see any reduction in on a city basis per se uh, is just that one city outperforms the other on some quarter okay. and depending on seasonal variations as well Okay thank you so much and all the very best great thank you so much